Okay, here we have the equation negative 3 multiplied by the quantity x plus 6 equals 4x plus 2 minus 3x. And we want to know which of the following uh, could be a, a first step in solving the equation. So some of these things are, so, are definitely valid. You, you could do them, but it's not necessarily going to help you arrive at the answer. So that's what we're looking for, something that would help us get at the answer. So A says we'll just subtract 6 from both sides of the equation. B says we'll add 4x to both sides of the equation. C says we'll combine all of the terms on the right side. And D says apply the distributive property to the left-hand side of the equation. So let's see here. So if we add 6 to both sides of this equation, I'm going to leave a little space here. So here we're examining, you know, part A, which says let's add 6 to both sides. By adding 6 to both sides, I don't really see what that's going to do to help me sort of simplify and sort of, you know, start combining and, and making this problem more manageable. So while it's perfectly legal to add 6 to both sides, I just don't see how that's going to help us arrive at a solution. So part A to me says that's probably not the, not the thing to do. Part B says add 4x to both sides of the equation. Well, the same thing. So if we add 4x to both sides of the equation, again, I don't really see how that's going to help me simplify things at all. I'm just introducing more terms involving x that I'm eventually going to have to reduce and simplify and combine. So I don't think part b makes any sense. Part c says combine all the terms on the right side of the equation. Now, the issue with that is... You know, when I first saw that, I said, ah, you know, maybe that's the thing to do. So the problem is, is in the terminology. It says combine all of the terms. Well, the 4x and the negative 3x, we could combine those. Those are like terms. They both involve x. But 2 is just a constant. So if we somehow tried to combine all of them, um, it's just not, there's not an algebraic way to combine all three of those terms. So that's not going to work either. Again, if this was a test, I would say, aha, it's D. Let's go to the next one. D says apply the distrib distributive property to the left-hand side of the equation. And let's talk about why that, that makes sense. And, you know, just for fun, let's just go ahead and do the whole problem. Why not? Okay, so the distributive property... We use the distributive property when we have some quantity in parentheses and we have, you know, some, some number or some term out front. And the idea is we multiply that, that, in this case, the negative 3, we multiply that to both terms inside the parentheses. That's going to be the distributive property. So in this case, I would take negative 3 and multiply it by x. That would be negative 3x. Negative 3 multiplied by a positive 6. Well, a negative times a positive is going to be a negative. 3 times 6 is going to be 18. So to me, this is good just because once there's no parentheses left like there is now, you're, you're free to start combining like terms. You're free to start moving things around. And that's what I want to be able to do. So on the right side, we do have like terms. We have this term involving x. It's a 4x. And we also have this negative 3x. So if you think about combining that, 4x minus 3x, that's going to leave you with positive 1x, which we just write as x. And then we still have the plus 2 left over. So my goal at this point is to get all the x's on the same side and all the numbers on the other. So to move the negative 3x to the right side, I'm going to add 3x to both sides. You could have subtracted x from both sides as well. There, there's no problem doing that. So negative 3x plus 3x, that's 0x. We're left with uh, negative 18 on the left. 1x plus 3x, that's going to be 4x plus 2. And the same thing, I want to move this term involving just a number. It has no variable attached to it. 
I'm going to get rid of that by subtracting 2 from both sides. Well, since I'm adding 2, I'm going to subtract 2. Negative 18 minus 2, that's going to be negative 20. On the right side, we're just left with 4 times x. Well, the last thing I'm going to do here, since I'm multiplying by 4, I want to get 1x all by itself. Since I'm multiplying by 4, I'm going to divide both sides by 4. Well, 4 divided by 4, again, is just 1x. That's what we want. A negative over a positive is a negative. 20 divided by 4 equals 5. So that's actually our answer. x equals negative 5. So, of course, again, the problem didn't ask for that, but it never hurts, right? You know, might as well go ahead and go through it all, just so you can see the whole process. So, to me, in this case, answer choice D would be the correct answer. We would apply that distributive property to the left-hand side of the equation. That would certainly be a, a good and useful first step.